no information regarding any specific location on Earth is to exist in SCP-4885 file unless given direct permission by the O5 Council. Item Number SCP-4885 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Currently, it is only theorized that SCP-4885 is contained. To further elaborate, SCP-4885 is contained within an unknown Class 17 containment chamber in an unknown site. In the event that SCP-4885 breaches containment, Procedure Enviant Eum is to be enacted, which consists of the following procedures. 36 Class 17 containment chambers are to be connected to an independent self-driving vehicle. At all times, 216 inactive containment chambers are to be readily available in case of sudden and unforeseen breach of SCP-4885's containment. One D-Class subject of stable mental health is to be submitted into the vehicle and driven into the system. A cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator is to choose a random number between 1 and 36, and the vehicle is to be transported to a containment chamber based on the number chosen. Each containment chamber has a single digital monitor that is capable of outputting video at 720p resolution. Once a D-Class subject is transported to a random chamber, a message is to be sent to every monitor simultaneously. This message consists of the current location of SCP-4885, delivered via an implanted tracking device. The GPS is only accessible by Level 5 personnel or SCP-4885 containment staff on a need-to-know basis. After approximately two hours, each containment chamber is to be transported to a randomly designated Foundation site via self-driving trucks. The trucks are to be disguised as a packaging service in order to prevent suspicion. In the event an accident occurs during this stage, Procedure Invenia Eum is to be enacted again. No personnel who are aware of SCP-4885's existence are to go within 100 meters of any Class 17 containment chamber. Several signs and warnings have been placed around each chamber, labeling it as a water treatment room, and that attempted access is punishable by immediate amnestization and loss of employment as decided by the Ethics Committee. These warnings tell personnel to report to a nearby automated site overseer of any leaks from the chamber, in which the person will be visually amnesticized by the overseer, and Procedure Invenia M will be reenacted. For more information regarding the composition of Class 17 containment chambers, please consult Document 7631.00. Currently, SCP-4885-1 instances that are located via FAR2.AIC are contained within Location I. The whereabouts of Location I are only known to FAR2.AIC. Currently, FAR2.AIC is connected to 80% of CCTV security cameras within the United States, and 40% of total CCTV security cameras on Earth. SCP-4885-1 instances discovered by FAR2.AIC will have specialized Foundation carrier drones to be dispatched and attempt to grab the body and carry it to Location I, using routes that minimize the chance of unwanted civilian interference. In the event that a civilian notices a drone and SCP-4885 breaches containment, the drone will send an all-alert message to SCP-4885's containment team, and Procedure Envia M will be enacted. In the event that Location I's whereabouts are discovered at large, the next personnel located within document Paint the Town Yellow will establish the next Location I, and their immediate family will be notified of their death. Description. SCP-4885 is an anomalous humanoid resembling the main character of the popular series of puzzle books Where's Wally, known in the US as Where's Waldo. This entails that SCP-4885 wears a horizontal red and white striped shirt, a red and white bobble hat, and jeans. However, a noticeable difference in appearance from the character is the entity's paler skin and the lack of eyes. In the event that a subject knows of SCP-4885's current location at any given time, SCP-4885 will move to the nearest wall and begin to phase into it. SCP-4885 will appear inside of the subject and will reach up the esophagus and grab the subject's chin through their mouth. 
SCP-4885 will then proceed to pull themselves through the subject, destroying their internal organs and their spine. Once this has occurred, a yellow liquid will exit the corpse's mouth and will cover the subject entirely, which causes it to become an SCP-4885-1 instance. SCP-4885 will remain in its current location, occasionally patrolling the area until another person discovers this location once again. However, if SCP-4885 is close enough to the subject when they discover its location, they will instead approach the subject, attempt to climb into the subject's mouth, enter their abdomen, and exit their body through the subject's pelvis. During this time, SCP-4885 can easily dislocate or relocate any joint in its body, and its skin and muscles will gain the consistency of a malleable solid, allowing it to easily climb in and out of the subject. SCP-4885-1 instances are anomalous corpses that were created by SCP-4885. The entire body of an SCP-4885-1 instance is covered in illustrations similar to those found in Ware's Wally books, with many different characters appearing on the instance's skin. These illustrations originate from the liquid that exits the corpse's mouth. Currently, no instances of the cartoon character Wally have been found on the SCP-4885-1 instance. These illustrations cannot be removed from the subject unless the skin it is placed on is removed. If a subject knows the location of any given SCP-4885-1 instance, SCP-4885 will teleport itself to the subject and kill them in the exact same manner as if they discovered SCP-4885 itself. This will also transform them into an SCP-4885-1 instance. SCP-4885 was discovered residing in within a small wooden house. Mobile Task Force Chi-19, Unrelenting Punishment, was sent to capture an entirely separate anomaly and did not know of SCP-4885's existence. Subjects: Amelia Merrick, M1, James Klein, M2, Kurt Stoll, M3. Begin log. Mic check. Yup. All good. Equipment check. Everything's working as intended. Ditto. Transcript number 67. We are entering the house. No one's talking to you, Melly. Oh, stop it. That was not the time, Kurt. <laughs> right. Sorry. The group enters the house. The initial descriptions of the object were a pair of black spectacles capable of killing the user and covering their body in strange pictures from an unknown children's book. It was obviously Where's Walt. Kurt, stay professional. I just want to bring some life into M1's robotic speech. I'm trying to keep my job, Kurt. <clears throat> right. The group searched the ground floor for the object and began to go upstairs. Scraping noises are heard below them, but the group does not notice this. They're the picture on the wall. Hmm? Yeah, it looks weird. Looks like crayon. Take a picture. Already on it. Good. Think it has something to do with the anomaly? Of course. It looks like Waldo. Do any of you have an idea where the object may be? Er, I think it's in here. Which room is this? Um, bathroom. There's a toilet and, uh, a shower, yeah. At least I think it's a shower. The room is circular, with a normal porcelain toilet at the other side of the room. There is a small depression into the floor leading to a small drain. Strange. What kind of shower is this? There is a modified sprinkler on the ceiling. There is a switch on one side of the room that I assume would activate the sprinkler. Seeing as this house has been abandoned for several years, I doubt it would work. M3 activates the switch. Water begins to come out of the sprinkler. I stand corrected. Who is paying the water bill for this to work? Is it still hot? M3 touches the water and immediately recoils in pain. Gah, it's scalding. Who is… I have discovered the object. It was rested, uh, resting on the toilet. M2 is seen holding a pair of black circular glasses. The lens appears to be missing. Good. You know the drill. M2 carefully examines the object, checking for fingerprints or any other traces of evidence. A small set of fingerprints are discovered on the temples of the glasses, which are revealed to be his own. Yup, these are the ones. I'll put these in a baggie real quick. 
M2 produces a plastic bag from a small container around her waist and places the glasses inside. There is an inscription here. It's in, uh… Where? Over here on the wall. The phrase is seen on the wall in… This was definitely not here when we first got here. Should we just leave it be and tell Command about this, or… It's most likely mimetic. Here, let me translate it. I have training. M2 takes out a small foundation bay translator and then puts the phrase. Huh. Well, never mind. Doesn't appear to be mimetic. It says, The basement. The corpses from a child's book are in the basement. He is there too for… And then it cuts off. Hmm. Take a picture and we'll send it M2 begins to groan and hold her stomach. Are you okay? What happened? A set of fingers exit M2's mouth and grab their jaw. The hands push down, launching the jaw across the room. SCP-4885 exits M2's body. What the f- Both M1 and M3 begin shooting at SCP-4885. The entity charges towards M1 and shoves their fingers down their throat and begin clawing into their mouth by unhinging their jaw. Please fuck, oh god, P please command, we're at- I repeat. We need assistance, ASAP, help, he- The audio is abruptly severed. End log. When the transcript was received by a nearby site, the site almost immediately went into lockdown as SCP-4885 killed most of its personnel. The O5 Council enacted an emergency meeting, and procedure N via M was created. Shortly after this, the procedure was enacted, and SCP-4885 was theorized to be contained. All information regarding SCP-4885's location of discovery was removed via an automated algorithm, and SCP-4885's file was created. Addendum: Location Eyes Creation Note from lead researcher Andrew Pent Recently I was alerted to the apparent danger of SCP-4885 and the corpses that it creates. Sure. We have procedure in via EM, but there are presumably hundreds of SCP-4885-1 instances out there that we cannot contain at all, as even the O5 Council has stated that they do not know how to contain the corpses. Here's my proposal. I will require no D-Class, nor any help from anyone. I will create an algorithm for drones and other machines to detect SCP-4885-1 instances, grab them, and deliver them to a specific location, which I will refer to as Location I. Location I, as far as any of you are concerned, will not exist. This Location I will be known to no one except for me, and me alone. I will establish Location I in the algorithm that I have created, and I will allow SCP-4885-1 instances to be dropped off at Location I. Any of you that know SCP-4885's effects know where this is going. Once Location I have been established and the algorithm is up and running, I will exile myself to a location that, as far as any of you are concerned, will not exist. I will cast myself to the forest and I will wait for SCP-4885 to take me. Roughly three days after I exile myself, activate Procedure N via EM and do not go looking for Location I. If you're reading this and you're not an O5, then everything I have just said has already happened and its proposal was a success. No need to pray for me. Instead, pray that you never find Waldo.